Hi, today's topic is integers. Is integers a new topic or are we familiar with integer? Yes, we are pretty much familiar with integer, isn't it? We have uh, done this chapter in grade 6. So, let us do a quick recap. What all kind of numbers fall in the category of integer? Natural numbers, whole numbers and all the negative numbers. Okay, so let us make a small Venn diagram. I have all the natural numbers here. What are my natural numbers? The numbers which I can use to count anything will come under the category of natural numbers. I can say, can you please give me one cup of water? One. I have three books with me. Three. There are two cars. Two. So these numbers are used to count something. So when you can count something, that number will come under the category of natural numbers. Zero. Can you use zero to count anything? No. So zero is not a natural number. So which is the smallest natural number? One. Very good. So this circle, let it have all my natural numbers starting from one till infinity. Other one is my whole numbers. What does whole numbers have? All these natural numbers along with our big big zero that comes into whole number. So which is the smallest whole number? Zero. Now in integers category what will come along with the natural number, the whole number, all the negative numbers. What are negative numbers? The opposites of positive number. What are positive numbers? Natural numbers. So what is it? Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3 like that till infinity. So what did we understand now? Integers consist of all the natural numbers, all the whole numbers and all the negative numbers. So what does integer not consist of? What numbers are not part of integers? All the fractions and decimals are not part of integers. Is it clear? If I say 4 by 5, it is not part of integer. If I say 7.3, it is not part of integer. Right? I hope integer section is clear. Right? So now let's go to the next part which is number line. Why do we use number line? To visualize all these numbers, we can do addition, subtraction and all easily. We can see how the numbers are changing. So basically number line is a straight line, isn't it? And the mid term is what? Is a zero. Is that correct? Now, in this number line, you can clearly see all the positive sides are towards the right hand side of the zero and negative are towards the left hand side of the number line. Perfect. So positive towards the right hand side and negative towards the left hand side of the number line. Good. Now one more thing we will notice here. 2 is greater than 1. 3 is greater than 2. 4 is greater than 3. As the numbers move towards the right hand side, what do you notice? Numbers are getting greater. Is that correct? See, my numbers are moving towards the right hand side. So, 10 is in the right hand side of 4. So, which is greater? 10 is greater. So, when you go towards the right direction, the number keeps increasing just that much. And when you go towards the left hand side, the numbers are decreasing. You can see 10, 9, 8, 7, it is decreasing. So, this actually stretches till here to the negative part also. This is applicable. 
if you look at two numbers negative 2 and negative 8 so which is greater and which is lesser see 2 is towards the right of negative 8 so negative 2 is greater negative 8 is towards the left of negative 2 so negative 8 is lesser right now also one more trick is there towards the negative side people mostly get confused the number which is closest to 0 is always greater and the number which negative number which is farthest from 0 is always smaller if I have to see negative 1 and negative 6 which number is greater obviously negative 1 is greater it is the closest to 0 positive 6 and negative 6 which number is greater negative 6 is lesser than negative positive 6 so positive 6 is greater always positive numbers are greater as and when they are compared with negative so if you get a question with one negative number and one positive number you don't have to think anything you can just say the positive number is greater okay always positive numbers are greater than the negative number next question what is a absolute value the term absolute itself tells us what exact isn't it absolutely exactly we say that so if i get a number negative 7 what is the absolute value of negative 7 the number 7 itself without any sign no positive sign no negative sign the number 7 is the absolute value of negative 7 correct it goes with the positive number also if you have positive 7 and they ask you to find out the absolute value of positive 7 you just have to write 7 that's it now let us learn some uh, rules of addition subtraction and all okay just let me know if you have two positive number what operation will take place that is very crisp and clear it will be positive and you have two negative signs which operation will take place again the operation will be positive because two are there they are strong so whenever two same signs come make sure it will be addition two same signs if it is two uh, positive numbers or two negative numbers the operation which takes place will be addition but then if one number is negative and one number is positive they become weak because one is positive one is negative so what will happen negative operation will take place understand okay so let us see some examples because this is very very important concept which will be useful in most of the coming chapters so you have to get it very clear okay i am going to add 3 plus 4 how much will it be 7 no need to put a sign because positive number default it is positive you don't have to put any sign perfect if you have minus 7 plus minus 3 I'll put it in a bracket not to get you confused for this kind of question I will write two steps what will be my next step I'll write minus 7 as it is my role now is to make sure that I convert these two signs into one sign what did I tell you plus and minus one sign is plus and one sign is negative so what should happen 
negative sign will come right so it will become minus 7 minus 3 when two signs are negative which operation takes place addition takes place so what will be the answer 10 but here we cannot stop if you write 10 your answer will be wrong because in this addition or subtraction you have to put sign which is very very important and always whenever you perform these operations the sign of the greater number will come which is the greater number here 7 7 is the greater number and what is the sign of 7 negative 7 so the answer will become negative 10 is that clear let us do one more example to get it clear okay it's very very important so we need to make sure that we are doing it correct okay so now um, let us use numbers negative 5 minus positive 2 okay what will happen in the next step we have to go step by step. You know maths is like a puzzle. If you do it step by step, you will never go wrong. But if you skip steps, you try to do mental calculations, there are 50-50 chances of getting the answer. Okay. So minus 5 I will write. This plus and minus will become what? Minus. And you will write 2. Plus and minus. You know this will become minus i told in the top also when one plus and one negative and one positive come closer it becomes negative that is my first step to make sure that these two steps are converted into one sign now two numbers minus five minus two negative five negative two what will happen addition will happen so 5 plus 2 is how much 7 we will not stop here we have to give a sign to our answer which number is greater 5 is greater and the sign of 5 is negative so we will make it as negative 7 our answer will become negative 7 correct so let us just see one more example to make sure that we know how to go about it okay so my uh, question is positive 10 minus negative 3 this is my question so again i should have one more step as i always say to make these two signs one negative and negative if it comes close what will happen what sign will come in place of negative and negative positive 3 isn't it and 10 plus 3 is 13 just stop we don't have to put a positive sign because it is default we know it exactly so that is done that's it i hope it is clear right so now we can go to our next slide we are going to do a problem sum now problem sum as i just said like you know it is like a puzzle so here we will not go and do it at once we will just divide it into small small parts and then do always make sure you read the problem sums very carefully so that you get the correct answer Rahul earned 60 points in a video game. He earned. Earned means what? Is it positive or is it negative? Yes. Earned means it is positive. Isn't it? So he earned 60 points. Let us write 60. He lost 40 points. What is lost? It went from us. So definitely it is negative 40 right 60 minus 40 is how much 20 now let us move to the second line 
earned 80 points after losing 40 he is earning 80 points so after this step he has only 20 points with him I am going to add 80 because it is positive 80 so now what does he have he has 100 points now again he is losing 30 so I should use this value from this step come down losing 30 means negative 30 so 100 minus 30 is how much 70 is it positive or negative 100 is the greater number and 100 is positive so our answer is also positive he has 70 questions is that 70 scores is that correct now I did one question for you and you have to do this question try to do it try to see if you are able to do this if you are not able to do this put it in the comment box okay if you like this video please subscribe like it and share it with your friends till then keep practicing bye bye